morning, everybody. It's about uh, 11 o'clock. It's about time to start our church service this morning. I like to say welcome to everybody. It's good to see everybody that can make it out this morning. Got some some friends back again, and uh, I see Alan's in. It's always good to have them around, Alan, and Amy, and the kids. And Dexter looks like he's a, he's a happy man this morning. He's got most of his family here with him, so that's always a good thing when you've got your kids in church. And, uh, no, you've been doing your job, huh? So uh, I just want to start out by saying this is New Macedonia Regular Baptist Church. I know a lot of times the pastor forgets to start with that, but so everybody knows it's watching on uh, YouTube or, or whatever out there. This is New Macedonia. And uh, Brother Randall is away this week. If you've been following along on our uh, Wednesday night Bible study, you'll know that uh, Brother Ryan there done the one this uh, Wednesday, had a good little message there, how God, uh, you know, commun different modes of God's communication to, to man anymore, thought it was interesting, so uh, follow along with that, uh, Ryan will be keeping up with it for the next couple weeks, and he's here to preach for us this morning, so uh, in just a few minutes we'll get him up here, I'm sure he's looking forward to that, he, uh, he grew up in this church, and if you don't know Ryan, he is William's grandson and, and all that, but now we won't hold that against him. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm just teasing. William's been a, a good man in this church for a good long time. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, so let's, um, let's start our service off with uh, number 155, Victory in Jesus. And while everybody's turning there, I will briefly mention, you know, that we, we don't take up our offering. I know Brother Randall goes through this anymore. We don't take up our offering anymore right here in church. We always send it into the P.O. box, you know. Uh, and like I say, this church has never been about money. It's just for the upkeep of the church and what have you. So it's P.O. box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. Very simple, very easy. So we'll continue to do that for a bit longer. Uh, Coronavirus, it comes, it goes. Some of them say it's on the rise again. I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, thank God uh, most of us have stayed away from it. I know it got my, my oldest brother buddy pretty bad there. So it is a real thing, let me tell you. And, uh, and a lot of people have suffered with it. So uh, just keep those folks in mind as well. But let's uh, start off with 155, Victory in Jesus. Let's see if everybody can... Uh, Help us out this morning. It always sounds much better when everybody joins in. Yeah. All righty. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save us Beneath the 
see if anybody has any special prayer requests. We want to open up our service here with prayer always because I believe prayer changes things, guys. I've seen uh, I've seen the evidence of that. I really have seen that. All you got to do, you know, when I was a young man, <clears throat> I was working in the uh, tile business with a fella, and we went into, a, of all things, uh, a racket club, a sporting club. Now, this was guess what, uh, 44 years ago or something, something like that. But anyway, it was a good while back. And there was a picture on the wall there that says, all you have to do is open your eyes to see the hand of God. And I thought, man, how true that is. Man. Everywhere you look around, you even nature, and I think you touched on that in your uh, Bible study this week, right? Yeah. Nature itself even speaks of God. So all you got to do, folks, is open your eyes and you'll see. And I'm not talking about actually seeing a hand like my literal hand, but you'll see the handiwork of God all yeah. around you. Yeah. So at this time, has anybody got any special prayer requests this morning? Uh, Sister Josie, I've seen you had your hand up before. So. Uh, Pam, and then we're leaving for vacation, so remember us, and then Richard, you know, Randall and Terry are yeah. Florida, and they have to come home and them. Absolutely, folks. Do not take that lightly, man. Always... Uh, Hey, bow your head before you start out on them trips. There's a lot of hazards out there on that highway anymore. It happens every day. Don't take that for granted. You know, you need that, the protection of the Lord while you're traveling around. And yes, we do. Uh, and make sure you remember those, uh, Sister uh, Josie, Brother Dave, the whole family's uh, going. And I know my son, daughter-in-law, and my grandbabies will be along on there too. So, so remember all of them. And Brother Dexter. Uh, me and Pam is and uh, old man Tom Lyons, but he's not doing good. And yep. uh, I've got a huge prayer list, but it gets bigger all the time. Yep. And also, what I always say, the lost and undone, that's most important. It is. It is, folks. Uh, make sure before it's everlasting too late. Somebody thanked me last night for adding to my prayer list and said they were doing better. Uh, prayer does work. Absolutely. Uh, there are several of us around here. I, I think Brother William can attest to that too, yeah. buddy. It, somebody told me one time, said, I believe that guy's like a cat. He's got nine <laughs> lives. He's been in there for nine, uh, different operations. And I believe he has, haven't you, William? And, I've had many of them. And I know um, a good practice I think his son told me he had one time was that when he's going in for an operation, he always takes that Bible with him. And I thought, gosh, that's a good practice. You can rest assured Amen. on that word of God, can't you? Amen. You really can. And uh, so remember uh, Brother Dexter's request, too. Anybody else? Um, my granddaughter, Sophie, she got bit by a tick a couple of weeks ago. She's getting a lot better, but it still bothers her sometimes. So remember her. Yeah, them, them can be it was, a, it was a pretty bad bite. She's on antibiotics for two weeks, so... Remember her. She's doing pretty rough. It was pretty rough at the beginning, but she is better. Yep. They they can be. Those can be very nasty. I've seen some people have some some real serious effects yeah. from them. She I mean, did. I know we take as a kid. I know we was out in the woods all the time. But sometimes you get a hold of one of them nasty ones, and they really and they really do a number on you. So remember, little Sophie. Pam. My friend um, Donna. She her cancers came back and they're going to put her back through radiation but the radiation's already damaged her kidneys 
and her heart. So they don't know how long she's got. I remember Brother Randall said, buddy, if the cancer didn't kill you, the treatment almost would sometimes, you know, so that's something to, you know, folks, and when we, when we lift these people up, and, and they're not the closest of people to you, and you're not sure that you know those people, but still pray for those folks like it was you. How, how serious in prayer would you be if the doctor told you it was you? With a, you'd be praying a lot, wouldn't you? Yeah. I know I would. It makes Amen. a difference. So pray earnestly because the Bible tells us, the, you know, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. So remember that. Anybody else? Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if maybe a lot of y'all in here might know him, but Eugene Mays. Yeah. Uh, old man, ba uh, Jim yeah. Mays is trying yeah. he's uh, not looking good for him. They said uh, he could go any time. Oh, well, I'm sorry. To, you know, every now and then he used to come down here and had a sweet yeah. voice. Yeah, he could sing. He's, he'd he's, get a little nervous on us and he wouldn't want to do it very often. But, man, he had a good voice, didn't he? And he would, he would sing. Uh, Alvina said that he's got some, some dementia real bad and um, I forgot what Yeah, but he's not doing real good. Well, do remember him. I, I remember when he came forward in the church. I really did. Good day for me, too, that day. Anybody else? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, brother C. Eh? My prayer is Nancy Combs, Rodney Griffin. Okay. Remember those requests as well. And don't forget old brother C.A. there too, folks. He needs you. And I know Charlie Mays there, he does. Uh, Mitchell always says pray for his brother there. His little or younger brother, you call him. One or the other, but he's his brother. Anybody else with a special prayer request this morning? Oh, okay, go ahead. I'd like to ask for prayers, traveling mercy for Amy and Allen. They'll be with the family because they'll be traveling back home this week. They'll be on the highway. And also, prayers for the people in Florida. Absolutely. That, sad, that, that was. That really was, guys. Man, what a surprise, huh? And just yeah. one after the other. It's always good, like I say, to see Brother Allen come in. Don't get seen very often. And it ain't you, of course, too. You know, we enjoy her. So, yes, we will. We'll remember that request as well. Buddy, I know you had your hand up a minute ago. Yeah, me and my entire family. And Stanley, I was talking to him about the parking lot there, buddy. He, uh, he needs your prayers. Absolutely. And that's what I say, folks. These are, you know, don't take that lightly. These are serious. When you, <clears throat> means a lot. Amen. Yeah. Really does. When, when you think. That all hope is gone, you know. You got to pray earnestly, cause God's always there. He'll always be there with you. Anyone else? Geneva. My prayer list and my family. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Geneva always remembers her prayer list and her family as well. Folks, we've got we've got a thousand people. It seems like that we could pray for. Of course, my little mind, I can't remember all those names but hey you know God knows each and every one of them and if you uh, like I said earnestly lift them up according to his will hey he'll take care of that situation so like I said take that very seriously when anybody asks you to pray and you say hey I'll pray stop and pray for them if they want to say hey, you want to do it right now we'll do this right now take care of that situation because God's still on the throne and he's still in charge, guys. He can take care of them. Anybody else before any... My mom and my prayer box. Will do. And remember that request. Anybody have any unspoken requests? I know sometimes people don't want to mention all of them, but uh, God knows your hearts. <clears throat> and he knows your thoughts are far off, folks. Well, I'll tell you what. At this time, uh, Brother C.A., do you feel like... Uh, we haven't had you uh, open in prayer. What you feel like praying, opening prayer this morning? I'm kind of weak. Kind of weak this morning. That's fine. That's fine. Brother William, are you? Let's all bow our head and go to the Lord in prayer.
Gracious Father, Lord, we come to you again this morning in the office way we know how, Lord, just bowing towards your earth, which is at your footstool. We thank you, Lord, for the many mercies and blessings you bestow upon us. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for our life, for waking us this morning, Amen. giving us the opportunity to be here. We just pray, Lord, that you would continue your love and blessings to us. Lord, you heard all these prayer requests. You already know who we are and what we stand in need of. I'm sure there's not a person in this place that doesn't need your touch, Lord. Just uh, bless us, Lord. Bless all the sick and the suffering wherever they are. Bless the old and the feeble, the lonely, the destitute, the little, the orphans, the poor. Bless our land and country right now, Lord. It's in terrible shape. Give our rulers righteous judgment. They might uh, rule the judge with a righteous judgment. Take care of all these problems we have. Bless Israel, your land, your country, and your people. And I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Pray, Lord, for the missionaries out there on the battlefield who are doing your work today, Lord. Bless them, strengthen them, give them encouragement, give them the words that, that people might be saved. Go with us, Lord, love us and keep us. Bless Brother Ryan as he comes forward. Bless Amen. your little children wherever they're gathered together this morning, yes, Lord. Lord. Share blessings out on us, we pray. Love us, keep us, bless us. Help us to do the things that would please you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we do humbly ask and pray. Amen, amen. 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 Thank you for that uh, nice prayer there, Brother William. And, uh, I think at this, oh, I don't know this young man's name, though. Ron. Ron? Ron, they said you wanted to do a special song for us this morning, man. I can do one. Sure. All right. Well, we'll have Ron come do us a, a song here before Ryan comes. There you go. If anyone else in here got a special they'd like to do, uh, let me know. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. If you want to sing with me, uh, you want to do the old Margaret Cross. You like that one? It's on 314. Yes, sir. We, yeah. we like that. <laughs> on that hall far away stood an old rugged cross in the months of spring and shade. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will clean. someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God, let his glory above to bear it on dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a in the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross 
I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen. Thank you, Ron. Hey, John, you feel like singing he touched me. Tanya, do you feel like singing He Touched Me? You feeling good enough this morning? No. All right. Amy, did you have a special you wanted to do? Huh? Is that you can find one? Come on, Tanya. You, wow, she's good. <laughs> we, got, we got enough time. We got, yeah. I, Brother Ryan said we got as long as I leave him about 30 minutes anyway. Huh? <laughs> Hey, if we run over, we run over a little bit. It's Sunday. It's a, they were supposed to be here, ain't they? Yeah. We'll never have this time again. That's for sure. Hey, you can't redeem it, can you, William, That's if right. you waste it? That's true. We want, to get the, we want to get the full load this morning. Absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. Shackled by a heavy burden Neat the load of guilt and shame then the hand of jesus touched me and now i am no longer the same right. he touched me song since my grandfather's funeral. Hey, sometimes it does. It's Take your time. Absolutely. You're doing fine. <laughs> there is going to be a meeting in the air 
in that sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. Twill be glorious, I do declare. And God's own Son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. Yes, <laughs> Many things will there be missing in that meeting. For the morning's bench will have no place at all. There will never be a sermon preached to sinners. For the sinner has refused to heed the call. There will be no mourning over wayward loved ones. There will be no lonely nights of pleading prayer. All our burdens and our anguish will be lifted at that meeting in the air. Well, there is going to be a meeting in the air in that sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. Twill be glorious, I do declare. And God's own Son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Well, it's getting about that time. Anybody else got a special if they want it for them? We get Brother Ryan, I'm getting close to his time, but and looking very forward to what he's got for us today. Amen. Brother Ryan, you ready? Yeah. Don't look like anybody else wants to do one, so why don't you come on up and preach for us, brother? Amen. <clears throat> Pray for him, guys, as he comes in the same. Amen. Right. Uncle Deck, you said move that in some? Yeah, move it in a little bit so we can hear it in the back. Alright. You and you're not shy. No. Alright, let's go to Galatians. You got a Bible. Hopefully you got a Bible. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Now, uh, today is, what's today? Well, it's a holiday, ain't it? Independence Day, actually. That's correct. So, I figured I'd bring you a, a uh, Independence Day message today. So get Galatians 5. <clears throat> now, I'm a patriot, okay? It hurts me to see things going on in this country. It aggravates me, gets me mad. But we, we still live in the greatest country on earth. Amen. I mean, and the people that talk about not wanting to live here and they don't like how our country was founded and things like that, those are people that have never had the chance to go and live in uh, Romania or the Ukraine or, or something like that. We still live in a great, great country. And it's, uh, it's good to be an American, and I think a lot of times we take our liberty and freedom for granted. Amen. The fact that you can be here today and worship how you want to worship and carry the Bible, whatever Bible you want to carry in, uh, to carry in and, and be able to drive down the street without having to go through checkpoints and things like that, that's a, that's a blessing, and we take that for granted. There's people in the world that don't live like you live, but keep that in mind. But uh, we're celebrating, today's July 4th, we're celebrating the Declaration of Independence, which is basically what, what July 4th is about. That's the day they signed that. And uh, that is a great, that Declaration of Independence is a great piece of American culture. It's a great piece of American history. All right, and what that thing, what that Declaration of Independence did was it basically, I mean, we were, our forefathers during that time, they were, they were getting ready to rebel and revolt against England because we were under the thumb and oppression of England. And before all that, you know, they were talking about taxation without representation. You hear that phrase a lot. Who's ever heard taxation without rep? You know what the last part of that is that you don't hear quoted a lot? Taxation without representation 
is tyranny. So what the Declaration of Independence was doing was it was basically uh, it was basically declaring, hey, we want to self-govern, we want to break away, we don't want to be under tyranny anymore. And uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson was one of the guys that wrote that, that signed it, I think, and wrote, I think he wrote most of it even. Thomas Jefferson said that the Declaration of Independence is an expression of the American mind. Better get that. Now what's the thing, what the basics of the, of the Declaration of Independence is this. Life, liberty, and what else? The, the pursuit of happiness, right? So that the expression of the American mind, according to Thomas Jefferson, is, is live, have some liberty, and be able to pursue happiness. Okay? And there's places in the world where you can't do that. Alright? And uh, that, uh, that document basically outlined what it means to be an American. Now, I'm glad I'm American. Amen. All right? I'm glad I'm in a country. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, when they swear somebody in, they still do it on a, on a King James Bible. I'm, I'm glad that they do that. And I'm glad that uh, there's still Scripture floating around and there's lots of churches in America. But what that what that dec and, uh, what the Declaration of Independence also did was it united those thirteen colonies. It brought them together. It, it brought them together as a unit, and they they came together and said, you know what, we we, we want to sign this thing and, and you know and, and and declare ourselves to be independent and, and have liberty. One interest, couple interesting things about the Declaration. Of did you know that that during World War II? Remember when the, Jap the Japanese bombed us on, at Pearl Harbor? They took the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Secret Service put those documents, the, the original documents, on a train. They stopped in Louisville, Kentucky, and then they took them to Fort Knox and put them under lock and key during World War II for fear that, you know, what if our country gets invaded? These are our, these are our founding documents, right? A little piece of history there that you, you may have not known. Here's another interesting thing. Just a few short days after July 4th, I think it was on July 9th or something, uh, a riot broke out in New York, up in the New York Harbor. There was lots of British ships and things up there, and when, that, when word started traveling around that independence had been declared, uh, those guys got a little rambunctious up there and a little, a little, uh, a little ready to fight. And uh, the kind of a riot broke out against the British up there. They took the statue of George III, tore it down, melted it, and guess what they made out of it? They made musket balls out of that, which was going to be used to fight the British. And I don't have anything against the Brits today. They're, they're you know, they're they're somewhat independent. But uh, back then, they were, they were, there was ty ty tyranny going on against, against us. So uh, uh, the, 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 the Declaration of Independence is a, is a great, great document. It defines who you are as an American. All right? Man. Now, in that same vein of thinking, all right, the basic principles of, of the the Declaration of Independence is life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and that kind of defines who we are. And that same vein of thinking, what defines you as being a Christian? Now, I don't know how many people's in here, maybe 40, 50, something, I don't know how many's in here. I'll bet you, I'll bet you there's, there's somebody in here that's not saved. I'll bet you. I bet you there's somebody in here that's played religion a long time, but they're not really saved. That happens. Every, you know, every church experiences that kind of thing. All right, but, but what defines us as, as members of the body of Christ, saved believers, what, what kind of defines who you are? All right, so I want to take kind of those things that are in the Declaration of Independence. We're going to translate them into the Christian life and see where, just give you a quick message on, on uh, the Grace Declaration of Independence and what grace brings. All right? Now, there's two operating systems in the Bible, basically. 
Yeah, grace and law. All right, grace and law. If you're saved today, you are not under the law, you're under grace. Amen. All right? And what the law is, the law is a performance-based acceptance system. In other words, that's a fancy way of saying, I've got to do things to please God. But what grace does is grace says, well, Jesus already did it. He, the, 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 the pleasing thing that was done in God's eyes was His Son coming down and dying. And if you think that you can do something to help Jesus along, right, that's not grace. You know what that is? You're, you're getting, your, your toes are in the water with the law system. And, and you know, I've got to perform. I've got to do things to please God. Well, come to Galatians 5. Look at verse 1. Since we're talking about liberty and, and Independence Day. By the way, if you're going to blow off some fireworks today, don't blow off any fingers or anything. Uh, especially you men. Because I know how, I'm a man. I know how men are. Men like to push the envelope with danger. Right? We did a couple of those. Like, we let off some last night since, you know, today's church day. We don't, I, don't have, I got church tonight again. I don't have time to do fireworks and stuff today. So we did ours last night. And, uh, you know, we were tying things together, wick, tying wicks together. And, and we had the tube shooting mortars, and sometimes they didn't fit. We didn't care. We just smash them, make them fit. You know, who knows what that's going to do, right? You take gunpowder and all that stuff, start smashing it, right? Maybe it's going to go that you know, Who knows? But uh, just be careful, all right? Don't, don't blow any fingers off. How many of y'all ever had a firecracker go off in your hand? I mean, you ain't lived till you've done that. Some of you ladies probably haven't done that, but a lot of you guys have, uh, have let that thing cook too long and it went off in your hand, right? So uh, you haven't lived till you've done that. Uh, but just be careful today, all right? And uh, as you're thinking about your liberty as an American, think also about your liberty that you have in Christ Jesus because the, when a person gets saved, there's, there's a, an element of freedom and release that you experience Absolutely. from bondage. The bondage of sin, the bondage of the law, all that, all that stuff, Christ sets you free from that stuff. So keep that in mind, you know, as you're thinking about your freedom and your liberty, keep that in mind that you know, American freedom's good, but freedom in Jesus is better. Amen. You can be, a, you know, you can be an American and live in liberty your whole life, die and go to hell. That's true. What a pitiful, what a pitiful experience. Absolutely. What's better is being an American, being and then being saved and having spiritual liberty to go along with your, you know, your democracy that you live under and all that. Galatians five one to three. I better speed things up here. He says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. That's the thing about the law. People say, well, if I'm going to get to heaven, I've got to be a good person. I've got to keep the Ten Commandments. And I got to do this and do that. And I better be at church Sunday or God's going to get me. You know what that is? That's the law. Amen. The thing is, when you live under that system, and you, in your mind you say, I'm, I'm going I'm to be a law keeper. Let me tell you what it does. It makes you a debtor to do the whole law. Amen. Do you realize there's more in that Old Testament law than just the Ten Commandments? There's 613 ordinances back there in Leviticus and Deuteronomy and, number, and all those Old Testament books that you had 613. It's hard enough to keep 10. It's hard enough to keep the first one. Yes, sir. You think you can keep 600? But if you think you're going to be a law keeper and get to heaven that way, you're a debtor to do the whole law. All 613. Guess what? You're going to fall short. That's what the law does. It makes you fall short. You know what grace does? Grace comes and overtakes and floods out your sin problem and all that law keeping isn't necessary because Christ did it all. And grace steps into that gap and says, I'm going to give him grace instead of having to keep that law. Here's some grace. Amen. Just get saved. That's what grace is. Grace is getting something that you don't deserve. 
And then look back at Galatians 4, just prior across the page there, look at verse 9. Now, this is what Christians do, and I'll never understand it. Christians will get saved and then they'll revert back to the law and law keeping. And if I don't tithe, God's going to be mad at me. And if I don't do this, God's going to be mad at me. That's not grace. You know what that is? That's turning back to the weak. Paul calls the law here the weak and beggarly elements. It's, it's not rich. The law's weak and beggarly. It's a beggar. You know what it's always doing? When you think you can do good works to get to heaven, that ideology, that system, it's always begging and saying, give me, give me, give me. I want it. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. That's what the law does. It's a beggar. You know what Christ? But Christ gave, 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 gave. Yes, sir. He's not one to take, take, give me that, give me that. That's the law. Christ is the giver. Amen. And you just take the free gift. That's what grace is. Grace and law is a big difference between those two. Look what he says. But now after that ye have known God, verse 9, or rather are known of God, uh, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again uh, it to be in bondage? That was the Galatians problem. People in Galatia, they got saved by grace and through Paul's message and then they reverted back to Israel's law program. And Paul said, why are you going back? Why are you going back to all that, to all those ordinances and all that bondage? Why are you going back into those handcuffs? Christ has made you free. So, as a Christian, the same way that our forefathers, you know what they did when they signed a Declaration of Independence? They basically said, we're signing this thing. This, this is a contract declaring that we've got liberty. When they signed that, there was new liberty afforded to our forefathers during that time. When you get saved, there's new liberty for you that you've never experienced before. You know who, you know who knows what it's like to, to be a free American? Not people in Poland. Not people in Holland. Not people in communist China. They don't know what, what liberty's like to be a free American. You know who knows what it's like to be a free American? Americans. You say, I don't like Christianity. I don't believe all that stuff you guys say. Why don't you try it? So you're never gonna you're never gonna know what it's like to be a to be a free Christian in the body of Christ with liberty that you get through Christ Jesus until you are one. There is no liberty until you take that step of faith and become saved. There is no liberty. You're shackled by your sin. And you know what takes care of sin? You know what it says about the law? You know what Paul says about the law? He says the law is the strength of sin. The thing that gives the law power and muscles and might is sin. But you know what grace does? Gra grace reaches above that bondage and above that sin. However wide your sin is in your life, grace is wider. It can cover it all. All right? That's liberty. All right? That's not... Law doesn't provide that. Remember back in the... You know, right after World War II, the, Germany was split in two. You had East Germany and West Germany. And East, East Germany was communist, basically. West Germany was more... Well, it was more West-minded. It, it was more about liberty and freedom and democracy. And they had that Berlin Wall, man, that separated all that stuff. And I, I, I heard a story one time, I never did forget it. And it was about, about some of those people that were living in East Germany and they were trying to get to West Germany. And they were running across the tops of buildings like you see in movies. And uh, they were trying to get to that wall and get over that wall and they were skipping across buildings. And uh, the, 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 the East German uh, police or whatever they were, they were, they were on their tails, guns loaded, and it was just like something out of a movie this was, but this was a, this was a real story. And this, this one guy, he was at the edge of a building, man, and he got right to the edge, and he couldn't, he couldn't make the jump to the next building, and they, they came up behind him and had him at gunpoint. And he was about 20 or 30 stories up, and uh, he looked at 
He looked at them, and man, right over there, about 50 yards was freedom. And right behind him was guys with a gun. You know what that dude did? He yelled, Free height! Which is freedom in German. And jumped to his death. He said, I'd rather jump and die than be under the thumb of oppression. You don't know what it's like to live under that kind of thing. Neither do I. Because we've never experienced it. So don't take your liberty. We should love liberty like that guy. You should love your Christian spiritual liberty like that guy. To, at, to keep it at all costs and protect it. They're trying to take our freedoms. If you haven't, if you haven't noticed, if you haven't, unless you've been living under a rock for the last 15, 20 years, they're trying to take our Christian liberties. They don't like your Bible. They don't like your Savior. They don't like anything that's wholesome and right. They don't like. And they want to get rid of it. And you've got to stand. That's why Paul says, stand fast in the liberty you have in Christ Jesus, where we started in Galatians 5. You've got to stand. All right? Now look, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Right? Paul says that. I'm not telling you to get an AK-47 and go blow people up. Right? But you gotta, you got to make a stand. All right? In the same way that our forefathers made a stand and declared liberty, they had new liberty. They had some new freedom because they got themselves out from underneath that thumb of oppression and tyranny. And as Christians, if you've taken that step of faith and gotten saved and, and things like that, what you've done is you've taken that step. And you've got, you've got liberty. You've got liberty. The law works wrath, but grace brings joy. The law works wrath, Paul says. Where you see anger and fighting in churches, I'm talking, when, 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 in churches, all right? When you see fighting and trouble and angry people and things like that, there's an element of the law in there. Somebody, somebody has, somebody's trying to function under performance instead of grace. Because the law works wrath. The law is the strength of sin, but grace is the strength of forgiveness. The law brings forth death, death but grace brings forth life. Amen. Look at Galatians 2.21. Trying to hang out in Galatians so we don't have to do a lot of turning. <clears throat> you better think about this this verse if you think coming to church is going to get you to heaven you're frustrating God Amen. look at Galatians 2.21 what's it say I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ is dead in vain <clears throat> if you think you can you know just because being a good neighbor is going to get you to heaven. Being a good neighbor is great. Yeah. Not telling lies, that's great. Not stealing, that's great. Not killing people, it's all good stuff. Yes, sir. We're supposed to be moral. But look, there's a lot of people in the world that don't, that don't do any of that stuff that do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That don't mean they're saved and going to heaven. You're frustrate, you can frustrate God by trying to perform. That's what I'm saying. Now, look, does living right please God? Absolutely. But when you think you can perform and get to heaven through your performance, you're frustrating God. All right. Not only that, look at Galatians 6 again. I'm sorry, 6. We were in 5 earlier. Number 2. This is point number 2. So the first one is they, those forefathers got some new liberty. When you get saved, you get new liberty. Spiritual liberty. When our forefathers signed that thing, let me tell you what that basically did. They basically became a new nation. All right? They become a new nation. Look at, uh, look at uh, Galatians 6. We're going to read 14 and 15. But those 13 colonies, they got together and they united and became one unit. Okay? 
And uh, similarly, similarly, when we get saved, we get liberty, we become a new creature. Amen. The same way that the Declaration of Independence guaranteed that a new nation was being born, when you get saved, you become a new creature. Yep. All right? So there's, there's parallels between your grace independence and the Declaration of Independence that, that our country experienced. Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. But what avails some? What, what gets something done today? What's, what, what, can you, what can you do that actually gains you something spiritually today? It's not circumcision. It's not Sabbath keeping. It's not certain kind of haircut, certain kind of outfit. All that's so listen to a certain kind of music. All that stuff is, is basically performance. The thing that avails and accomplishes things for you spiritually is the fact that you're a new creature. Not circumcision or uncircumcision. That's, that's law keeping. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm a new creation, a new creature, because what I experience is not just a, 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 a new uh, a reforming or, you know, oh, well, Ryan found religion. How many times have you heard that? <laughs> Ryan found God. Now, that's, that's loose too. That doesn't mean anything. What God? You know what I mean? Uh, or, or, you know, I, he's, he's on the straight and narrow now. He's going to church. He's on the straight and narrow. What's that mean? That don't mean anything. I'm glad an actual process took place where God made me a new creature. I'm not under some reformation process or some, some walk in the straight and narrow or some, some oh, Ryan found religion. No, no. I'm a new creature. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. Real quick, 2 Corinthians 5. Look at verse 17. Are you in Christ? You people that are out here listening to me? Are you in Jesus Christ? If you're saved, you are. You know what that means? Look what it says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. See that? Yeah. I don't. Sometimes we, the same way that we don't fully grasp our liberty in America, I think sometimes we don't fully grasp what you have in Christ Jesus. You are a new creature. You are a new creation. You're create. You are. God took you and made something new out of you when you. When you got up off your knees after asking Him to save you, and you put your faith and trust in Him, there was an immediate thing that took place where you became a new creature. You know, when you stand before God at the judgment, you know, it's, uh, Romans 14, 12, so then every one of us shall give account of ourselves to God. When you stand before God, you know He's not going to see the old you. He's going to see a new creature. That ought to give you some confidence and some reliability about what you're a part of. So we become a new creature. In the Bible, the only group of people that experience being a new creature is people that obey Paul's gospel. Israel doesn't become a new creature. Noah didn't become a new creature. Adam didn't become a new creature. Christ hadn't even died yet. The people that experience becoming a new creature and that are placed into the body of Christ are people that, that have heard Paul's secret gospel that was a mystery. They hear what Christ did on the cross and they accept it and believe it and they get saved. Amen. Then you become a new creature. You are part of that special thing. Don't take that for granted. Being, being American is a special thing too. You know why people come here by the droves wanting to get in? You know why they're, why they're pounding down the border down there in Mexico trying to get in? They're not getting in so they can come and be under tyranny. Now we got some problems. Alright? We got some, some political problems in our country. And they're trying to take our, our liberties. But we're still operating under a democracy to some degree. Alright? So being a... You've experienced that. And then lastly, look at 2 Corinthians 5 there. We'll, we'll close with this. 
When they signed that Declaration of Independence, okay, when they, when they signed that thing, what that did is it gave those guys, and it gave everybody that lived in those 13 colonies, it gave them a new purpose. It gave them a new purpose and a new something to do. All right, now I'm part of an America. You realize when, when God, listen, when God set things up under Adam and Eve back there at the very beginning, He put some things in place. He put, the, he put a family in place with a husband and a wife and children. The family, if you have a family and then some people reproduce and you have a bunch of other families, before long you've got a corporate group that will eventually form a nation. Because you know what makes a nation? Let me tell you what makes a nation. Families make a nation. Husband, wife, and children. Without that, the, without that enmeshed in the society, there is no nation. All right? Bob and Tom getting married does not strengthen and, and establish and stabilize a country. The thing that, and God, the thing that God set up was the family unit to, to, to make a nation. All right? Without a nation and without some form, and without that, without that family unit functioning in society, you would have no nation. It would unravel. All right? So a nation has to have form. It has to have function. And it has to work together as a unit. Otherwise, it unravels and comes apart. And then you have, you know, then you have uh, anarchy. But the family unit is what is the building blocks of a nation. Without the family, you don't have a nation. All right. When they signed that thing, there was there was they now realized, hey, we got a thing here. We got an organization going. Our country does. This thing's a unit. It's a it's a and we got to we got to we've got to put some form to it. And we've got to operate and function and do a certain thing to get this thing to keep before it unravels. All right. And just like they had to do that and they had a place now and they had a thing to do is to, to make that country work and to make that country great and to make it operate. Some things had to be put in place. And listen, when you get saved and you become a, a new creature and all that, you've got your new liberty, right? In Christ Jesus, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now you've got a new job and you've got a new function. All right? If you're not functioning properly, as a member of the body of Christ, uh, body of Christ, uh, I'll tell you what can happen. Paul calls it schism in the body. There can be issues in the in the body of Christ. All right, even though we're all saved. So they had a new purpose and a new reason to live and function, and so do you. Every single person in this room that's saying, "Now look, if you're not saved, the first thing you need to do is get saved." You've got way bigger problems in figuring out what you're going to eat for lunch today and uh, you know all that stuff. You better figure out your eternal problems. You hear about people dying all the time, man. Just, just wake up one day, conk over. I'm 43. I'm starting to get a little bit gray and a little bit older. Certainly not as old as some of you, some of y'all in here. You got me beat by a lot. Some of you. And I'm, I'm being facetious, but you you get the point. Yeah. If you th if you look if you if you think religion's going to going to fix your problem, and your church attendance here is going to get you to heaven, and that's what you're counting on, and you're leaning on that. Well, I came to New Macedonia faithfully for 40 years. Look at all my Sunday school pins. You think you're going to stand before God and show Him your Sunday school pins? You think that's going to hold any weight? It's not going to hold any weight. You know what holds weight? The work, the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ shedding His blood. When, when, when you get judged, that's what He's going to judge you on. He's going to judge you based on what did you do? My son sacrificed and came down here out of glory and died for your rotten, filthy, dirty sins. And what did you do with that? Now when you take that step, He's got a new job for you.
Look at 2 Corinthians 5. We're going to close here with this. Look at verse 18. You're a new, cre you're a new creature in verse 17. Verse 18, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and, have given unto, and, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Do you realize that you've been brought into the ministry of reconciliation? You know what your job is? Your job is to stand and take a sinner and take Jesus Christ and bring them together and unite them. Man. Now you don't do the saving work, but your job is to reconcile them and bring them together. Man. Somebody somebody told you, yes, sir. didn't they? Yeah, they did. Somebody either dealt with you face to face in person or you heard a message preached or something. Somebody reconciled you to God. That was somebody fulfilling their job as a reconciler. Now, you know what reconciliation is? Let me tell you what I don't do. I don't get a hammer out and beat people over the head and say, if you don't do this and do that, God's going to get you. That's not right. You, know you know what the root of reconciliation is? It's bringing two parties together that are, that are at odds. All right, getting the hammer out and making them be reconciled because they're scared half to death because if they don't, you know, that's not, re you know what the root of reconciliation, the root of reconciliation is love. That's, that's what you, that's what you tell people. If you want to reconcile somebody and you want to function as a reconciler, look in verse, uh, man, look there at verse, uh, uh, look at verse 20. Do you realize you are an ambassador? How's your ambassadorship today? You people that are saved. Not only that, look at verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. You are here in Christ's stead. You're here officially in His place representing Him as an ambassador. That's your new function, your new purpose. How you doing with that? COVID made it hard. Amen. I'll grant you that. COVID and all this nonsense made it real hard. You can't door knock. Nobody wants to talk to you. You breathe on me. Right? Half people don't want to, they don't want you to knock on, come to church. I'm not going out in public anymore. So our ministry of reconciliation has been made difficult by our current circumstances. But you got to do what you can. Whatever you, whatever you can do, do what you can. So, the Declaration of Independence declared... We're about five minutes over. That ain't bad, is it? All right, so the Declaration of Independence basically declared us to have, as a, as a country, new liberty, uh, a new nation, and they had a new purpose. It wasn't just declare it. Just, we're just declare ourselves free, and now we're just going to step back and see what happens. You know, a lot of work had to be to get our nation going and formed and get laws written and all that stuff. A lot of work had to be put into that uh, to get our nation established so that it's so that it's stable. A lot of work, man, so that you can live in a, a stable, democratic place to live. All right, and uh, the same way that they had, you know, a, a new liberty, new creature, and a new purpose. You in Christ Jesus, you have a new liberty. You became a new creature, not a new nation, but a new creature. And you've got a new purpose. You say, I've never, I've never really done anything for the Lord. We was all there at one point. Every person that's ever done something for the Lord, was at, they were at a place in their life at one point where they weren't doing anything, and then they started doing something. Right? So being an ambassador, you know what an ambassador, an, a good ambassador, um, a good ambassador represents uh, his country. We have ambassadors, American ambassadors that are in other countries, and they are there to represent our nation. They speak officially on behalf of our country Man. in other countries. You're an ambassador for Christ. What kind of an ambassador would go to Iran and never say a word. Yep. And just sit, sit at his desk and do nothing. What kind of ambassador is that? It's not a very good ambassador. 
So we've been given the ministry of reconciliation and we are ambassadors for Christ Jesus. All right, so the charge mainly was to Christians today. So think about all that when, we, when you're letting off fireworks, blowing your fingernails off later. Uh, think about your, li your liberty that you have in, in Christ. Now I pulled a, I pulled a good one on, on my family last night. All the ladies were sitting in one side of a lawn chairs and the guys were sitting on another and we had these smoke bombs that looked like, they looked like M80s. Y'all remember what M80s looked like? Wrapped in that maroon paper with a big wick sticking out. Well, we had some of those, but they looked like smoke grenades. Smoke, they, they looked like them, but they were smoke bombs. And we'd been letting off all kinds of stuff, and I went to throw it, and I threw it backwards and landed it, and then it took off running. You should have seen them women, those women get up and took off running. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. i never seen my wife run so fast. <laughs> You'll pay for that later. I probably already paid for it. Uh, but when you're having fun today, don't forget that you have liberty in Christ too. Amen. That's 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 my message today. All right. And if you're not saved, get saved. Come grab me. Come grab Dale. Come grab Dexter. Come grab my grandpa. Some grab somebody and say, Hey, man, I want to know. I hear about this being saved. I've been in church my whole life, but I never. I don't know if I've ever actually asked Jesus to save me and counted just on that. You know, only Him. Only only His grace. And, you know, put myself aside and my deeds and my works aside and only trust in Him. If you've never done that, you're not saved. If you're counting on anything short of Christ's work on the cross, you're counting on something that's not going to get you there. Man. And if you've never done that, take that step of faith today and get saved. All right, let's pray. And then thanks for coming. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming today. I hope you have a happy 4th of July. Let's all stand and I'm going to pray and dismiss us. And uh, hey, I appreciate the specials that you, that you, that you folks sang. Uh, thankful for that, and uh, I'm glad we got a pretty decent crowd. I think last year I was here. I was here back in the spring, and uh, there wasn't near this many people here. Amen. So that's good, man. It's it's it's, it's climbing back up. Man. And I think I think a lot of churches are experiencing that. People are starting to get out and get out in the world again. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful, Lord, that we live in America. Amen. God, I pray you bless our country. Uh, God, we got a lot of problems. Lord, but we also have a lot of things right also. And I just pray Amen. that you'd uh, continue to help our Christian liberties to be established and to, uh, to, re to remain uh, in place. And Father, most of all, we're thankful for your son and what he did for us at Calvary and that blood. Amen. That was not a cheap thing, Lord. That cost you a lot to Amen. send your son down here. Amen. And God, help us to be remindful of that and, uh, and just love you more every day. And we thank you for the Bible and for your word. And God, I thank you for this church and allowing me to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you amen. all for coming. I hope you got a blessing.